Hello everyone, I'm Arbanitas, Library Assistant here at the Seguin Public Library, and I'm here with Dr. Xiao and his students for our final uh, section in our virtual technology series, Zoom for Beginners. So hello, Dr. Xiao. Hello, Mara. Thank you for hosting us again today. And um, my name is uh, Dr. Roderick Xiao, and uh, I'm pleased to be here with you uh, with my student, Sama, and she is going to present to us all about Zoom. Uh, so I know Zoom is uh, a very popular feature right now, and uh, maybe some of us would like to know how to use it uh, and uh, also what to uh, pay attention to and uh, all those uh, questions that we might have. And if you have any questions, I think uh, Selma and uh, including myself will be available to respond to your questions and even providing you with more resources at the end of the presentation. So Salma, uh, would you like to take over, please? Yes. So my name is Salma Espino, and I'll be presenting Zoom for beginners. So I'll just talk about the basics for Zoom and what Zoom is. Um, so what is Zoom? Zoom is a cloud-based video communications app and has the ability for virtual video, audio conferencing, webinars, live chats, screen sharing, and other collaborative capabilities and it is available across all platforms so you can either access it through the browser um, or you can download an app on your phone a desktop or other mobile device so the capabilities of zoom um, has the ability for a chat function screen sharing uh, you can record a meeting uh, breakout rooms and you can change the background so for the chat function um, anybody in the meeting can send a chat to everybody, or you can either send a message privately to one individual. Um, also has the option for screen sharing. So the host can allow other users um, and the participants to screen share or the host themselves can screen share a PowerPoint or anything on their screen that they would like to share. Um, and for I think it charges extra um, a little bit, uh, but you can record a meeting so that you can later share it um, online. Or if you're a teacher, you can post your lecture online. Um, so students who were not able to uh, be in the meeting or maybe they just wanna look back and um, grab some quick notes, they can go and rewatch the meeting. Um, um, Salma, uh, let me step in here. Uh, thank you for that great introduction. Uh, I just need to add here, uh, if we have a free version uh, of Zoom, uh, it's only going to allow you to either save it locally to your own computer in case you want to do that kind of recording. But if you have a paid version, that's where you also have the, the cloud recording where you don't have to keep it on your local computer. You can uh, just record and save it um, on the cloud. And also you can share, easily share that recording with uh, uh, members or students or community if they need that. So definitely the, the paid one has a lot more um, functions that uh, you can use. The free one has the limitations. And one of the limitations is there's no online uh, storage or online recording, but also time limitation. You can only use the free one for only 40 minutes, or maybe 45. It's between 40 and 45 minutes, and then you have to restart again. But once you have the paid version, uh, there are no limitations. Okay, so the next capability is a breakout room. So this is basically where the host can separate um, participants in a separate kind of meeting. It's still under the same meeting, but um, you're just kind of in a different screen. Um, I like to compare it to kind of as an if you're meeting in person, uh, where the teacher kind of breaks individuals or students off into different groups and it's and you kind of work within your group. Um, this is the same concept of the breakout rooms just virtually. And so at any point in time, you can go back into the main meeting um, and then resume the meeting from there. And then another feature is uh, you can kind of have some fun with Zoom um, virtually and 
you can change your background. So for example, like this is the background of my room. So if I didn't want my anything in my room to show, I can just upload a picture or um, there's some images that Zoom has already on there that you can kind of just change your background and um, add some little bit of fun while um, meeting and virtually. Okay, um, maybe before we move to the next slide, uh, I would like to go back to the breakout room. In the breakout rooms, uh, there are probably three ways how to divide your participants into breakout rooms. You can either assign them um, automatically, so the system will just uh, randomly assign users to uh, a breakout room, depends on the number of uh, rooms that you're going to select. So that's a random, which is much easier to use in case you have a, a lot of students or audience for that case. Oh, you can assign them manually. That's the second um, um, option. And the manual one takes some time a little bit because you have to figure out uh, which participants goes to which room. Uh, so that also is a little bit of uh, time consuming. Another option that they have right now, the third one is you can, uh, you can, you can give participants, um, uh, enable them to select which room they want to go. So you just create the rooms there and then you say, okay, I'm just gonna give you a label, one, two, three, four, five, and then decide yourself to go to which room you belong to. So those are the three options, either randomly or manually, uh, the presenter or the host is assigning each one, or you just create uh, rooms and then you ask participants to select which room they want to join. Uh, that's the breakout room. It's, it's a wonderful one uh, option. Another thing that is also unique with the breakout rooms is once you're in that particular room, everybody can share their screen. Everybody can share their screen. So there is no limitation, uh, but there is no recording. So you cannot record anything in the breakout room, just like we're doing right now. Uh, what, what you see on the screen and uh, is the way I'm speaking, everything is recorded. In the breakout room, there is no recording at all. So you cannot capture that piece. Uh, another thing in the breakout room I'm trying to think here is uh, part of breakout room. You can also share documents among members once you're in a breakout room. Um, and um, I think that those are the only features that I can think right now for the breakout room. But it's a great feature if you just uh, play with it or practice and see how it's going to um, enable especially to break a large class into several rooms where students or members can engage in some kind of discussion or exchanging of uh, uh, documents and so forth. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to talk about hosting a meeting versus attending a meeting. Um, so with hosting, uh, whoever is hosting, uh, they kind of oversee the meeting and they have several special controls, including um, the ability to record the meeting um, allowing participants to join the meeting anytime. So if they uh, just happen to get kicked off of Zoom due to Wi-Fi connection, um, they can kind of, if they have the option on, the participant can join in without having to be in a waiting room. Um, so then the host also has the ability to create breakout rooms as mentioned before. And they have the ability to schedule a reoccurring meeting. So instead of constantly creating a new meeting with a new link, uh, the host can schedule recurring, recurring meeting and uh, the link is kind of steady. So the same link can be used um, to access the, the meeting. Okay, so I like to compare hosting a meeting kind of the same as uh, being the teacher of a classroom or holding your own lecture. So, Obviously, the the teacher is in charge of the lecture and what's going on. And uh, if there happens to be any group presentations, then the participants, which are the students, can um, go and you know present what they have and screen share essentially. Um, so it's the same concept, uh, just virtually. Again, uh, I think. Most users would like to take advantage of being of being able to record online, 
Uh, and again, if you need to do that, uh, that's for the easy of the distribution of the video itself, in case you want to share with the audience, but also for the storage of the video, then you need to make sure you are subscribing to the to this service. That means you pay for it and not a free one. Um, I like the option for um, uh, where you have to allow participants to join in anytime. And you do that by selecting the, uh, the wait, uh, the waiting room. And that's also a good uh, security feature because you don't want just anybody to pop in as you, uh, as you're hosting your presentation and then somebody can just click on the link and join your presentation and you have no idea who that person is. Uh, so a lot of issues uh, that had happened before, especially last year, as Zoom uh, started being used by many, many, many people, including um, ed educational institutions. Um, then we kind of learned that the waiting room is a good option. So at least we can control who is coming and who can join um, the meeting for that case. In addition to that, if, if you have the uh, allowing participants to wait, but also if you want to have more control, you can allow participants to register. So there's an op also an option for registration. When, so once they register, you have their full names and more details about who is that person. So when they click the link, they want to join that particular presentation, you can uh, check on your list and identify that person because they've registered and allow them to come in. So if there's a really huge presentation that uh, uh, a lot of people that you're anticipating going to join, yes, ask them to register. So there's a way how to set up a registration for, for Zoom and that's also another security feature. <clears throat> the ability to schedule a recurring meeting is also a good one. And as I think, especially for instructors, if you're teaching maybe four or five classes, uh, and then probably it's good to make sure you have uh, five links for each class, that's good. And you can use the same link for all your meetings with your students for that particular class. So that's where recurring is. You don't have to create a number of links for every day in order to meet with your students or maybe three times a week or so on. That single link surely can be used for the entire semester as long as that link belongs to a particular class. So that's where the recurring uh, option comes very handy. So next I'm going to talk about attending a meeting. Um, so the participant, unlike the host, does not oversee the meeting and they have uh, fewer abilities, including um, the ability to screen share. Um, they can still have the ability to do that um, if allowed by the host. And they have the ability to use the chat functions and they also have the ability to rename themselves. Um, so if they go by a nickname, they can uh, later on just change their name during the meeting. Um, I like to, again, going with the example of an in-person lecture and meeting, uh, as a participant, you know, I just kind of go in and listen. Um, and if participation is needed for me from the instructor, um, I can, you know, ask questions whenever I want. I can unmute myself and uh, have the ability to turn off my video uh, and turn it back on whenever I'm asking a question or if the instructor prefers to see the students as it is virtual. So um, in person, it's a little easier to see who you're uh, having a meeting with. Excellent, excellent. Uh, maybe I would like to add more about the ability to share, uh, screen share. Um, this is what I found. You know, if I only want to share a particular uh, page or a file, maybe Excel file or Word file uh, with my audience, um, one option is I can only pick that file and share with them, but also I can share the entire desktop. And once I have the entire desktop, then it becomes easier for me to select what I want to share. So sometimes you find a, a, a host is sharing only one document but when they are looking for the other documents, they can find them if they want to share those other documents. So the, the rule of thumb here is just share your desktop 
And once you share a desktop, then you have access to all the documents, all the pages, all the browsers, anything you are looking for. And it's easier to share with the audience if you have selected share desktop. That's one. Uh, as far as the ability to use a chat function, that's also great. Um, you can chat with the entire audience or you can chat privately with a targeted individual. So you can pick only, you can pick the person you want to share privately, or you can also share for everyone. That option is also available in the chat room, but also in that chat option, that's where also you can share a document. In case I have a document, I want to share with everybody so they can open that document. That function is also found in the chat. Um, renaming is great, and sometimes, uh, uh, I, I kind of try to block that option because if I want to really see their real names, I want to learn about some about my audience name, I, I really want to see their real names or maybe their registered name or maybe my student's name. So yes, it's a good option. Definitely you can play around with it, but also it could be misleading if you really want to put uh, names and faces together uh, and know your audience. Next, I'm going to be talking about just the basics for how to join a meeting. Uh, so in the image below, you can see when you open up Zoom, you can join a meeting. So when you click on that, uh, you can either enter a meeting ID if you know it, um, if it's given to you or a personal name link. Um, but if you don't have that and you just have a link, all you need to do is click on the link and it'll automatically open up. Um, the app and you'll be in the meeting. So yeah, the host will be able to send that link for the participants to join. Um, in the image below, as you can see, you need to enter when joining this way, um, the meeting ID, and then you enter your name. Um, and then there's two options on the bottom. It says don't connect to audio and turn off my video. Don't connect to audio is uh, kind of if you have that checked. When you join a meeting, you won't connect to the audio automatically. Um, you have to do that manually. So you won't be able to hear what's going on in the meeting if it's already started and if people are speaking, it just, it will seem like they're muted, but you're just not connected into the audio of the meeting yet. And then turn off my video if you have that checked. As soon as you join, uh, your video will be off automatically and then you can turn that back on um, whenever you need to. Uh, so next I'll be talking about just the steps for how to host a meeting. So number one, you open your Zoom app if you have it installed and you click sign in. Uh, so for hosting a meeting itself, you have to have an account, which is it's free to sign up for um, to be able to host. But if you're just a participant, you don't really need a Zoom account to join a meeting. So when hosting, you open your Zoom app and you click sign in once you have an account. And if you want to create an account, you can go to the Zoom website and sign up. Uh, number two, you log in using the email and password that you have created, um, and that's associated with that account. Uh, so once you log in, uh, there's kind of a the main Zoom window, and there's kind of four little boxes. And one of the boxes is the, the new meeting. Uh, so if you click the downward arrow on the new meeting and you select start with video, um, that will either turn on or turn off your video. And then once that is done, uh, you can click the new meeting to start an instant meeting. Uh, and that's all I have for the basics for Zoom. Well, thank you, Soma. Um, let me ask um, um, Mara to help us a little bit from the library point of view. Um, what has been your experience so far, especially since uh, the pandemic uh, started last year? and uh, community members coming to uh, the library or the service that you provide through Zoom. Mm -hmm. What has been your experience so far? So some of the questions that we'll get about the ones that we've had that are trying to attend our class have questions like, uh, what devices can I access Zoom on? Um, do I have to create an account to log in? Which I think you answered pretty well. And then also just in our experience actually using Zoom, a lot of questions that we have and that we get with other groups that are joining us is 
about screen sharing. So I don't know if y'all want to expand a little bit on those as well. Um, thank you. Uh, so I think uh, screen sharing uh, is a great option. And I think uh, it comes out of, uh, you know, it's, it's very appealing to people, especially if you are discussing about any topic, but also instead of just listening, you can also show or see what is a discussion about or what the image is about or what the agenda is about so people can follow along. And that feature is available to everyone, but as a host, as a host, you have that privilege where you can share your screen but also you can transfer, like uh, you can give permission to anyone else that you want to share their screen as well. So you have full control as a host. And then you can allow one at a time, uh, the person that uh, can share his or her screen, or you can just give everybody permission to do that. Uh, one thing I think I wanna go back and make sure I, 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 I say it one more time, to avoid confusion as you're sharing your screen, your screen once you go to, once you click the screen share, then look for the share desktop. And the desktop op option will be at the upper left corner. Uh, it's gonna be upper left corner. The first option is you can share desktop because next to desktop, you can also share whiteboard. So whiteboard, that's where if you're writing on the screen and uh, you're teaching, about uh, some kind of diagram, you can definitely write on that whiteboard and everybody also can see what you're doing. And you can invite them also to add their content to that whiteboard. But I'm just talking about the desktop option, which is on the right uh, left top corner option. If you select that, it's gonna be easier for you to, to select other files or other windows as you're talking or as you're presenting um, your screen, because otherwise, if you need to share all those things and you only select a particular one particular file, then you have to unshare, go back and look for that file again and share one more time. Each time you have to unshare and then look for whatever you're looking for. Once you find it, you go back and share again. So it takes a little bit more time to do that way. But if you share that stuff, you have everything in front of you and it's, you can easily um, navigate back and forth as you're sharing your screen. So that that's what I think I can, you know, emphasize when you are sharing your screen. Um, as far as uh, sharing screen within breakout rooms, as I said, everybody can do that automatically. There are no limitations. So once you're in a breakout room, there are no limitations, everybody can share, no big deal, except there's no recording of what is going on in a break room. You cannot record that. Another thing probably I could add here is the, you know, chat. If, if we are recording, if maybe you have a version that you can record your presentation and you're using Zoom, and then people or the audience is also chatting, that the chat is also recorded. And when you go back and review the video, you're gonna see exactly what people were chatting about, on, okay? But also you can chat privately. So when I chat privately, let's say I select I want to chat privately with Selma. If, if I do that and I send my message to Selma privately, that part is not recorded. So there's no way anybody can come back and review the Zoom session and see what was I um, uh, chatting privately with Salma or Mara. No, it's not recorded. And the Zoom did that for privacy issue. It's private, then it won't be recorded and it cannot be published. So that's something that uh, we also to 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 understand that. Um, talking about question. yes, oh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead, Mara. Just another question that I would have, um, kind of expanding on my question that we get a lot from uh, patrons about what devices Zoom can be used on. Um, what capabilities do you have? For example, say if you don't have a webcam on your computer, how how can you get around that? And say if somebody wants to have you join a part of their Zoom meeting, but you don't have a webcam, what are your options? Um, Salma, do you want to um, respond to that? Um, so an option I know of is that you can join a meeting with just audio if you don't have a camera. Um, 
And as far as the devices that it can, you can have it, you know, on your desktop as an app installed, or you can uh, access Zoom um, through the browser. You don't need the app on your desktop. Um, and you can also access it on any um, smartphone and um, tablet and other mobile device. But the restrictions on the phone is, the only thing is just the layout of it. It's a little harder to navigate because you have to swipe to screen, different screens. So, um, you know, to unmute yourself, you have to go to one screen and kind of hold down the button and then to see the whatever the host is sharing is like another uh, kind of page. And then to see the rest of anybody who has um, their cameras on is like a whole other um, a different page. Excellent, Sona. You have um, responded very well. And uh, let me just add a little bit more into this. Um, this era, we are we hear a lot about diversity, also equity and inclusion. It's a big thing. Now, we have some students that when they join a Zoom session, they are not comf comfortable to have their videos on but the audio is working fine. They're also engaging at that time. And the reason probably they won't be comfortable having their videos on is probably they're at home. They are taking care of their siblings and probably they're also worried about their privacy. And so when you open up, you know, when, when you turn on the video, you pretty much open up, you know, to the whole world. And if you are not prepared for it and not comfortable, then it's just best to let that student or the, uh, the, the the audience just to remain with the audio option as long as they can engage. <clears throat> so that has been that has been a very um, you know hot debate about should I ask my students to turn on their videos or should they just leave it you know with our videos and how could I know that they are really engaging in class and and that's a valid question from instructors in that case, but it become it comes an issue of uh, a really uh, privacy. But also, here's another one. Um, I think it, there are some a population, <clears throat> in some population where I think they probably they don't have access to the devices that also carries a webcam, as you mentioned before. So if that is the case, you cannot penalize the person uh, because they couldn't you know, show their video that's the only device they have so you have that's what we're thinking about the diversity equity and inclusion we have the population of some of the population where they have very robust devices that have everything other populations don't have that they're lacking that so if that is lacking but we have to find a way to include them as well and also understand where they're coming from so there is a balance that we need to make sure we wear here uh, knowing that not everybody has access to all those devices that on all the features that we have out there. There are people who really don't have at all, but at least if they can engage in the audio option, then uh, we should accept that. Very good. Thank you. I think those are very good answers to those questions. Let me let me ask Sama. Probably is there anything else you want to add? Some of the you know challenges that you think uh, you have faced, even as a student, and you're using Zoom for some of your classes. Um, that kind of experience would be good also to share with us. Um, so as you mentioned, Dr. Shaw, the whole you know privacy issue uh, with sharing your video, and um, as a student. You know, I myself am a pretty, you know, I keep to myself I'm pretty a private person and kind of shy. So, you know, on some days, when, especially when I'm at home and um, I'm having to have to share my video cam is kind of a whole other, adds kind of stress to it. And, um, you know, just to how I look and, you know, self-conscious, because you can also see yourself um, as you're in the meeting. But, uh, it's kind of hard to overcome because as I said, you can see yourself and rather when you're in person, you can't really see what you look like to others. So you're just kind of there, but mm -hmm. um, it it can be difficult, but I think in the beginning it was a little bit more difficult when I was having to 
video, um, share my video. Mm -hmm. But I think um, in the past year, I've kind of learned to overcome that and, you know, not be afraid to, you know, show my video and show that I'm engaged in the class. Uh, mm -hmm. But most of the time, a lot of times in the beginning, some of my classes required that you had your video cam on. And I think mm -hmm. now more people or professors are more lenient to, as long as you sh show that you're engaged through just, if you just have your audio on, you know, you ask questions and mm -hmm. um, you're participating, then it's fine if you have your video camera off. Yeah. yeah. I would like to add also, I know just as somebody who has been leading several Zoom classes over the past couple of weeks and over the past couple of months and through the pandemic, that as a presenter, it's great to be able to see other people's faces and to see, you know, the reaction when you're talking. It almost makes it feel like you're in an actual classroom and kind of, you know, we, I feel like through the pandemic, we've kind of lost a little bit of touch with each other and that, that kind of interaction is nice. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't Absolutely. be afraid to do that for sure. Absolutely. Well, this is wonderful. And I commend you, Salma, for, you know, overcoming, you know, what uh, many of us have gone through the same experience and not being comfortable, you know, having the video on and, um, and what comes with it. But uh, you're doing very well, very proud of you. And I think most of us, we're, we're getting there. Uh, it's a new thing, but uh, it's also for the good cause. But I equally uh, support that um, if, um, if uh, it's an option for a student based on their status, and uh, they really cannot uh, have their videos on also, we should be compassionate. We should also be able to understand where they're coming from. And uh, as long as they can engage in one way or another, we have some kind of dialogue that, that can go on between you know one person, another person or instructor and student. I'm sure things can get done, but uh, we need also to understand each other for that case. So I, I commend you for that. And uh, and Mara, I, I can't thank you enough for, for giving us an opportunity to engage with our community members for this semester. We had about uh, five um, you know, lessons, I believe so. And this is the last one for this semester. We used to welcome uh, community members to our classes physically. And uh, we knew that was impossible, but again, uh, through the Sigin Library, you made it possible for us to reach out to our community members. So I thank you so much for uh, making this possible and uh, also looking forward to um, strengthening our partnership uh, also in the future. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much, Dr. Shao, and uh, to all the students that participated in this uh, series. We do have all of the other classes recorded and posted online, so make sure that you check those out if you weren't able to attend. Um, and these will all stay posted on our YouTube just uh, as an online resource for the future. So thank you again to everybody who participated. Bye. Thank you so much, Mara. And thank you so much, Selma. Good job, Selma. Thank you. Thank you, Selma. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Mara.